Welcome back to the Daily Dean. So, how do we really know the moon landing wasn't faked? That is an excellent question, and I'm so glad you've asked, because there's more moon-related things li related to that. Now, obviously, you could say, oh, well, logically, what would happen if somebody, you know, if, if millions of people were brought into one, you know, conspiracy secret, right? At least one person has to spill the beans, especially when we have a, a at the time of the moon landing, right, a, a, a competing nation who would have been able to uh, deny the existence of the moon landing, but despite that said no, like, I mean, said yes, the moon landing was real and stuff like that, but that's boring, right? Uh, instead, people uh, in, the, in the Apollo missions, I forgot which one, astronauts put reflectors on the moon. And these reflectors, you can shine a laser at, and it'll bounce back, and you can, you can, you can, you know, measure the actual, well, this is actually unrelated to the moon landing, but if you, um, if you bounce a laser back and forth, you'll be able to see, hey, something is on the moon that we left, so the only way to get that up there would be through the moon landing, right? So... Uh, that's neat. That's a cool piece of information. But what do, what purpose does that serve? You may be again asking yourself. These reflectors help tell us the distance the moon is away from us. And uh, with that knowledge, this is a separate topic. You can actually find the moon is receding away from the Earth. You know, I think like two centimeters per year or something like that. So imagine this is the Earth. This is the moon. Soon it was here. Then 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 it was here as it you know. As it orbits, it, it's, it's thingy gets wider as it, you know, zooms away from the Earth. But you may also be wondering, wait, if the moon rotates, you know, wouldn't the uh, reflectors sometimes be away, facing away from the Earth, right? Well, that is also an excellent question um, because the moon always faces the same direction as it's circling around the Earth because it rotates at the same at the same rate as it orbits so then the same face of the moon is always facing us and that's a cool little bit of information but now I'm actually realizing that I didn't go over how we use the reflectors to calculate the distance from the moon that is an excellent question again basically if you have a laser that travels at the speed of light right and you calculate the amount you measure the amount of time it takes for it to bounce off the moon and back, you can find how far it traveled by dividing the time it took by the speed of light. Because we know, we know that if light travels, let's say like one foot per second, and it travels two seconds, we can conclude that the light traveled two feet. Because two, two seconds divided by two feet per second must mean it traveled two feet. We do that, but with, you know, it traveling 300,000 kilometers per second, uh, divided by the 0 0.00001 second it took to travel back and forth, and that's how long we know the light traveled for. Then we divide that by two, and see like, oh, hey, this is approximately how far the moon is, because it traveled here, then back, cut it in half, then you have the amount of time it took to travel to the moon. Boom, bam. Neat science stuff. Because, obviously, the speed of light doesn't change, well, in a vacuum, right? So we just, we just, we do calculations again to find out, oh, these are the mediums that travel through, this is what happens here and there, and stuff like that. So, um, you have to, you just take those things into account as well. And as you, you know, calculate it, you have the full distance to the moon. Give or take a couple, you know, 100,000 kilometers. But our measurements are pretty accurate, right? And that's how we know it travels so precisely two centimeters away every year as the Earth orbits. So, um, basically, you can also use that. This is a different thing. You can use that idea with the other planets. So we, we know how far those are. Because if you have radio waves, radio waves that will travel through space, uh, radar waves, I'm sorry, radar waves that will travel through space and, like, um, bounce off the surface of these planets, you can calculate, again, how much it traveled, how, you can calculate how far it traveled by knowing the time it took to travel. Because we know the speed, we calculate, once again, two feet, one foot per second, we can know the time, two seconds, therefore we can find out it traveled two feet. So, I just think that's an interesting way to calculate how close nearby planets are, because that doesn't work with farther planets. Because the radio waves actually dissipate, you know, the farther out you travel, 
according to neat little laws, right? But, um, that's just some cool astronomy stuff that I didn't personally realize, because, you know, that's a great question. How do we know how far things are? But then there's more interesting, th there's more complicated things involving, I'll just drop the names if you want to learn about them. Parallax, uh, stellar parallax, Cepheid variables, standard candles, white dwarf supernovae, and Hubble's law. Those are the five, including the, you know, radar waves, the six ways that we can find out how far things are in space. But it requires, it requires a lot more explanation than I'm willing to give. So if you want to look them up, be my guest. But, you know, it's cool stuff if, you, if you'd like to. But I'm not explaining it. So thank you. Bye.